What's up everyone? I'm David Warren and welcome back to this week's video. It has been a hot minute since I've posted content on my own channel. I am super stoked to be back and today I want to share with you everything about being a senior nurse anesthesia resident. I can remember before I ever started CRNA school, you can find videos on this page of me talking about going to CRNA school. I'm finally a senior and I want to give you guys an overview of what that looks like this year because i graduate in december of 2024 just a few months away i'm stoked about that and i want to share with you guys what this year is going to look like and so before we do that i want to catch you up on how i even got to this point how we even ended up here and kind of what that's looked like on my journey so I'm at National University in the DNAP program. It is a three-year, 36-month CRNA program. And the first 15 months of that program are spent on campus doing all of the didactic content. So it would be termed what you would say as front-loaded, meaning you're doing all the didactic content up front and you're doing all the clinical portion after. So I didn't do any clinical during the didactic portion. It was all just the in-class simulation lab, all that stuff. So I did that. I started in January, 2022, did that up until about like Mar end of March, 2023, starting in April, 2023, I started clinical. So it was my second year. So from April all the way through December, 2023 was doing clinical and the DNAP courses. So again, all the didactic content as far as like textbook anesthesia learning was done in those first 15 months. Starting with our clinical rotation in April of 2023, we had one clinical class and then one DNAP class. And that is just like our doctoral class. So two classes compared to like our four classes we had in the didactic component, two classes from essentially now or essentially from April 2023 till the end of the year this year when I graduate. So really nothing if, after April of 2023 last year, really nothing changes this year. I'm essentially in the same number of classes doing the same type of clinical rotations, just the DNAP class differs per quarter. So we're divided up into quarters here, four quarters per year, uh, starting in January, 2024. So just last month, I became a senior nurse anesthesia resident and we're currently in February, uh, just so everybody's on the same page. It's February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. Not sure when this video is going live, but at the time of this recording, it's January, uh, February 13th, not January, February 13th. Uh, I'm in my first quarter of my senior year uh, as a nurse anesthesia resident. And I really want to take you guys through what this year looks like, kind of what some of the challenges are and what my schedule looks like and kind of what clinical looks like and it's a lot to cover we're not going to hopefully spend too long talking about all of that but i really want to kind of condense it down for you and share what senior year of crna school looks like and so i am currently in two classes as I mentioned earlier so a dnap class and a uh, and a clinical course and so starting with a dnap class the class is epidemiology and population health and these courses are really meant to be distance accessible courses and so we're doing content but it's more of like discussion postings writing papers and then uh, taking quizzes or exams uh, based on the content that we're learning and so for this particular course we have quizzes that we have to do there are like five quizzes in the quarter we have discussion postings and then we have to write a paper and so that's kind of what that class looks like um, and you essentially do that just there's there are some hard deadlines but a lot of it is like the course is asynchronous meaning it's opened up at the beginning of the quarter and we can work through it at our own pace or our own leisure so you for me personally i try to get that out of the way pretty quick and so i like try to work ahead and get the discussion postings done get some of the papers done and get the quizzes done as i'm able to just because it's going to take some of that time off that I need to be doing other things like things related to clinical or logging my cases or, you know, things of that nature, studying, we'll get into all that here shortly. Um, but that's kind of what the DNAP class looks like. And it's definitely the less stressful aspect of, um, of like that quarter is the, the DNAP course, just because it's asynchronous and there are multiple ways to go about it. You can work ahead, you can save it for later. There are some hard deadlines, but overall it's pretty easy to, uh, to like work through it. And it's not significantly challenging material. Um, so that, like I said, this quarter it's epidemiology. And then in our clinical quarter, 
or sorry, in our clinical class this quarter, that is comprised of us doing clinical rotations. And so the clinical rotations are a little different than maybe nursing school or NP school. Like there's not a, there are a certain number of hours that we have to hit to graduate and to sit for boards, but virtually every CRNA program, you are going to go way ahead of the minimum required amount of hours. And so we're not necessarily tracking how many hours we get. And when we get to a specific hour mark, we stop. Whenever we go to a new rotation, we are essentially working whatever shifts the anesthesia providers work at that particular hospital. And so we will find out our clinical rotation assignment about three months in advance. And at National, we travel for all of our clinical rotations. So every 12 weeks, we're doing a different clinical rotation, usually in a different state. So, so far, I've been to Las Vegas, Nevada. I've been to Odessa, Texas. I've been to McAllen, Texas. And I'm currently in the like Sacramento area of Northern California for my fourth clinical rotation. And so again, I found out this clinical rotation back in like September, October. And so that gives you pretty adequate time to prepare for finding housing. We do have to find housing on our own. So the school's not responsible for housing, although some sites do have free housing that we stay in. Where I'm at now, I'm not in free housing. It's a paid Airbnb. And so you're responsible for finding your own housing and like your own transportation, obviously, to get there. And then there's a clinical coordinator at each site that will that you will reach out to before you start that will give you like an orientation and your schedules to kind of what that looks like. And, and the schedules just vary. There's no set schedule. It really varies depending on like what clinical site you're at. Like my last site was a level one trauma center. And so um, there were, you know, a wide variety of cases that we had to do uh, really anything and everything you wanted to choose from. And then at this current clinical rotation at this site, it's a, it's a smaller like community hospital. And so the anesthesia providers work Monday through Friday and you essentially just work until your room is done. And when your room is done and there's no add-ons, then you're like free to go home. And so usually it's Monday through Friday. Uh, like our first case is like 7 a.m. or 7.30. I usually get there at like 6.30, 6.45 and then work until whatever cases, you know, cases are done. Usually it's between like 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. is average. It's actually pretty light on the hours here at this rotation, which is good. Um, so that's kind of what the schedule looks like. And again, it just varies. It could, it could be completely different at another site. Like some of my colleagues in my class are having to take call and they're having to work, you know, longer hours. Like at my last site, I was there pretty much 12 hours a day, five days a week. And, uh, it, so it just depends on your site. There's really no set schedule. We're essentially working whatever schedule the anesthesia providers work at that particular location, if that makes sense. And that's just going to vary depending on what site you're at. And so again, you'll find the site out about three months in advance. You don't necessarily find your schedule out until a few weeks in advance, whether you're going to be doing call or weekends or 12 hour shifts, three twelves, or, you know, Monday through Friday, you don't really find that out until you get there and get going. And so that's just kind of come with the territory. Honestly, you just kind of have to deal deal with it. So uh, again, that's kind of what the clinical situation looks like. So um, I, like I said, I get there between 6.30, 6.45, and I'm done between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. usually, uh, depending on the day. And then that makes up the majority of like my week. Like I'm going to clinical every single day. Here, I don't have to do call. And I don't have to do weekends. So I have the weekends off and I have like the nights off. Um, but it's interesting because our clinical course, so I mentioned that we're in two courses this quarter. So the DNAP course and then the clinical course. The clinical course, our grade is composed of apex anesthesia password protected exams and the workbooks and so if you're not in anesthesia school it probably sounds very what the heck is this um, but apex anesthesia and if you're in anesthesia school you probably know exactly what i'm talking about um, apex anesthesia is like one of probably the like most commonly known board preparation software company out there that prepares you for your like board exams and so Apex anesthesia, if you're in like the NP world, Barkley anesthesia, or it's not Barkley anesthesia, Barkley review, it's very similar to that. Like it's it's a dedicated review course. And so um, 
our grade in our clinical class is not composed, uh, ironically, of anything to do with clinical. It is composed of Apex password protected exams and doing the Apex workbooks. So there are these modules that we do on Apex and it just goes over all the board related content, like all the stuff we learned in didactic never went away. It's still absolutely here and it's just in the form of Apex. So we're doing all of this board related preparation and there are these workbooks we have to fill out and it, it essentially goes over like what, um, like all of the anesthesia content, like it's kind of something like there's like pharmacology modules, there's airway modules, there's respiratory modules, literally everything that you would need to know for your boards is contained on Apex Anesthesia. And there are different modules that were assigned like per quarter. And there's these workbooks that correspond to that module. We have to fill in these workbooks. And it's essentially just like putting brain to paper and writing stuff down. And then there are exams that we have to take that are based on that apex module they're proctored exams and we have to take those exams and the grade between doing those workbooks and those exams that's what comprises our grade for this clinical course and so it's been that way since last year so really nothing to do in clinical actually comprises our grade for the clinical course it's all apex and so that changed like a couple years ago uh, just to help us better prepare for boards and so when i'm not at clinical I'm doing Apex and like hammering it out for board preparation and doing those workbooks, doing the password protected exams, doing all of the things that would, uh, that help us prepare for like board preparation. And so that's what our grades consist of. So our grades in the DNAP course, as I mentioned earlier, it's like discussion boards, papers, doing quizzes, that sort of thing, very asynchronous. And then on the other side, that other course we're in the clinical course doing Apex every, essentially there are like seven modules that we have to get through per quarter and doing those modules and doing those workbooks and then doing the exams that correspond with that. That's what makes up our grade. And it's essentially asynchronous there. You can knock those out as quickly as you want. There's usually, so there's 12 weeks in our quarter and there's usually like seven to eight Apex modules depending on the quarter. And so there are like weeks that you, and if there's some extra long modules that you have some extra time to kind of build into your schedule to make sure you get it done. So between doing clinical every single day and doing Apex and doing the DNAP course, um, it stays pretty busy, honestly. Uh, you know, I have weekends off, which is good. I try to take the weekends off and like relax or do something fun that takes my mind off of school. Um, so that's kind of what the quarters look like. And in addition to um, those classes, we also have to do our DNAP project. And so it's essentially a research project and here at National, we're divided into groups. So there are like groups of four or five people and we all do our DNAP project together. So they're not individual projects. It is a group project, which is good and bad in some regards. If you're in a good group, it's really good. And if you're in a bad group, I can see how it could also be bad. I'm thankfully in a very good group. I know all the people in my group very well, very like strongly motivated people. And it hasn't been an issue. We're essentially finished with our DNAP project. We got our group assignments like last year and there are multiple deadlines that you have to hit throughout last year and throughout this year to end up graduating. Like we graduate in December and our projects are due around that time. And so um, coming up later on this year, there are like some dedicated courses where we just have time to do our DNAP project. There's like a dedicated course for that. So. That hasn't been a huge deal this quarter, but going on this year, it definitely will become more of a thing, making sure we're hitting all the marks on the DNAP project. Ultimately, we have to submit the project for approval to our faculty board, and then we have to disseminate the project in some form or fashion, uh, either at a conference, by like a poster, an authorship, or we can do it in some social media platform. Um, so more to come on that, given that I have a social media presence here. Um, so that's kind of what the DNAP project looks like. It's somewhat takes a back seat until these deadlines arise and then we get together and like hammer it out. Um, so the DNAP project doesn't encompass a significant amount of time. And again, that largely depends on kind of what your project topics are. We have essentially free leeway to choose whatever we want to do. Um, choosing something that is not going to be extensively time consuming, but that will still get the job done is essential uh, because you can do like 
original research if you want, but you're just going to be spending a lot of time doing that because it is um, it, between, as I mentioned earlier, doing clinical and doing APEX and all the things that come with that is significantly time consuming. So that's kind of what that aspect of it looks like. The clinical aspect has been the most fascinating part. Um, I've really enjoyed that. And especially almost doing it a year now, you really get your feet under you. And as a senior nurse anesthesia resident, you are essentially expected to run the room with minimal to no help. And this largely depends on what clinical site you're at. And so clinical sites that I've been at have been very independent. A lot of them have been CRNA only sites. And the nurse anesthesia resident essentially runs the room. The CRNA will stand at the door on induction. You will get the patient in the room, or even before that, you'll go pre-op the patient, uh, determine is the patient safe for anesthesia? What kind of anesthetic plan are you gonna do? And then the patient rolls into the room. The CRNA usually stands at the door, nearby the door. You do everything. You induce the patient, get the patient successfully intubated. And then during the maintenance phase, the CRNA will leave. You're running the case by yourself. And the CRNA will come in, obviously, and check on you if you need help. Or if you have questions, obviously, people are there, but they're just not leaving you so you can fail on your own. But uh, if you feel comfortable doing that, they will absolutely leave and let you run the case yourself. When emergence and extubation time rolls around, they'll come back in and hang out during emergence and extubation. You take your patient off to the PACU and uh, you're essentially doing the case yourself. And um, it's really important that as a nurse anesthesia residents, you have that opportunity because you don't want the first time to do a case alone to be after you have a license. You want to have some of that experience of doing things by yourself, getting that experience while there is help still nearby. And so that's like vitally important. And thankfully I've had a really good experience with that. Initially starting, it's terrifying thinking about the fact that I'm gonna be doing a case alone. People are not gonna be in the room. Like, what am I gonna do? But speaking from experience, you will learn so much doing the case yourself. When you run into problems intraoperatively and nobody's there to tell you exactly what to do, and you're having to work through that yourself. Granted, if there's a problem, you can get somebody in there. But thinking through that, like, what am I gonna do next? That just, uh, it's really cool. I didn't, it's interesting looking back at my first rotation and thinking, how, like, how am I gonna get here? How am I gonna get to this point that I feel comfortable running the room alone? And just by experience, by doing that, by being put in those situations, you get comfortable running the room and being in those situations. And it's interesting because like, I don't even know, you know, like 99% of anesthetics go well without anything ever happening. There have been throughout my training so far, a handful of times that emergencies have happened and you have to be willing to step in and deal with that. And that's why CRNAs are paid extremely well, not because of the anesthetics that go well 99% of the time, but because of a problem or an emergency that arises that you have to deal with right there, right now, in a matter of minutes or a matter of seconds. And that's really why you're why we're paid what we're paid. And so that's kind of getting off topic. But being in those situations and being able to do that really builds your confidence, especially the sooner you get to graduation, the more you realize, hey, I'm about to graduate soon. Like I need to be able to run the room myself. And communicating those expectations with your preceptor or the CRNA group up front, being like, hey, I'm graduating soon. I'm a senior. Like I take a step back, like let me do this. If I'm imminently harming somebody, stop me. But otherwise, I want to take the reins. And it's been really cool to do that because most places will let you choose your own anesthetic plan, do what you want to do as long as it's safe for the patient. And that just it's incomparable to having somebody stand there beside you saying, give this, give this, give this, do this, do this, do this. Being able to manage that plan yourself, being in a, in a location that even lets you do that. Manage the plan yourself, implement the plan, and then run the room is just really good experience for whenever you graduate and you're gonna be doing it on your own. So you may as well take advantage of it now. So that's kind of what the overview of clinical and my first quarter has looked like going forward. So uh, during my like second, third and fourth quarter of this year, um, we'll still be doing those clinical courses. So we'll still have, we'll go to a different rotation, you know, starting next quarter 
And then, but I'll have the same clinical course, like we mentioned, there will be APEX to do APEX password protected exams that comprise the grade. And then there'll be another DNAP course that we have to do along with some of those deadlines scattered throughout the year for our DNAP project. And then closer to graduation, we have to take the C exam, which is a self-evaluation exam. I took that back in March of last year. We have to take that again around November and we have to pass that exam to graduate from the program to be eligible to sit for boards. And so I have a whole video dedicated on the C exam and how I prepared for that. So going through it one time, like I kind of know what I'm getting myself into and then um, being prepared for that again and just studying the apex, that's what's going to prepare us for the C exam. And then after that, graduating to take boards and get a job. Um, so I'll probably start looking for jobs I don't know, probably mid-summer, early fall, I will start reaching out and inquiring about what I want to do. Um, that's what the time frame looks like on that. I'm going to do a whole dedicated video probably on what I want to do job-wise and what that looks like. Uh, it's probably way too much to even discuss in this video. This is more of an overview of kind of where I'm at, how I got here, and what senior year looks like. Um, if I could say like three things, my senior year, top three things that we're focusing on, clinical, getting better at uh, really refining the technique. And so obviously by now we have the rudimentary skills down of intubation, airway management, managing a patient intraoperatively, but really refining those skills, like refining your wake-ups, making your wake-up smoother, incorporating new drugs, and trying new techniques. Um, those are the things that are really important your senior year uh, because you have the basic skills down. So clinical and then studying for APEX obviously is huge, doing board preparation because all of the front loaded stuff that we learned never goes away. It's still there. We still have to know it. It's just in this condensed form of APEX. And honestly, now that I'm a senior, it feels like some of that information is just like leaving my brain. So doing that APEX over and over really hammers it in. Um, and then the DNAP project, really like hammering that out, meeting those deadlines. That's what the senior year is comprised of at National University. Um, that's what the overview looks like. I'm going to do more in-depth videos on kind of more little rabbit holes here and there. Like again, I'll do a video on you know, job search, job-wise, what I want to do after, and then maybe some more clinical videos. Um, that's what an overview of my senior year looks like. I'm so sorry I've been absent for so long. I've been posting some on the CRNA School Prep Academy podcast. You've probably heard me there if you're in tune with that. Um, but I really want to get back into posting more content on my own channel. Thank you so much for watching. Drop comments below if you have questions, anything about senior year, nurse anesthesia, national, anything, comment below. I'd love to get back in touch with you and answer any questions that you have. Um, it come to my attention that when my when faculty in my program were interviewing people for the next cohort, a lot of you guys like watch these videos. So I truly hope that this information has been helpful to you in some way, form or fashion. Um, but thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.